I'm very sorry. The only thing that I know about Usher is that he was like um, friends with Justin Bieber. And the only reason that I know that is because like every high schooler at the time, uh, I had a performative dislike of Justin Bieber in like 2008 because you had to, to be a guy. Like it was one of the prerequisites for being, a, a, you know, so that's all I know. And I hate his hair. Does Usher have hair? Why do I remember a bald guy? Yeah, he's got hair. What's wrong with his hair? It's like really short. It's just like, it's it's just like almost a shaved head. I don't know how you could dislike his hair. It seems, it seems difficult to have an opinion on his hair at all. I think they meant Justin's hair. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, the amount of people that hated him when he was just a child was wild. Yeah, it's it's. You know, I've said before that all politics is about sex, and I think to a large extent that was too, because the hatred against Justin Bieber was mostly, I think, like, adolescent boys performatively angry at him because his effeminacy was seen as cringe, and it contrasted with how a lot of girls their age liked him. Because I know that was definitely a big part of it for me. So they, they were frustrated by the seeming inconsistency between his deviance from traditional masculine behavior and appearance and the fact that, like, you know, like, 12-year-old girls really liked him or whatever. So, I, I, I don't know. It was cringe, though. Yeah, sure, but, like, so is a ton of shit. Like, that, the, the hate wave towards Justin Bieber when that was a cool thing to do was insane. Like unbelievable one of it was just like one of the main topics of conversation from people who had never heard a song or knew anything about him was that they wanted him dead and it was over nothing like literally not now i think he ended up being a douchebag sure but that was not what it was about that was not like the subject of the performative hatred to begin with not even a little bit it probably fucked him up a lot too yeah probably did you do that with One Direction also? No, by the time One Direction was popular, I was like an adult and didn't do that <laughs> anymore. So many people make fun of like teenage girls for being, I don't know, like dumb or what, like teenage, of course they're dumb, of being like um, frivolous or like silly. But you look at like teenage boys are so fucking like hateful, you know? There's so much stuff people will like wave away, like, oh, that's for little girls or whatever. But then there's like, there's so much shit that even if it's for little boys, like monster truck rally shit or whatever, when you grow up, people still endorse that, right? All the stuff that's cool when you're like, uh, like a young guy, it, it becomes like either ironically cool or there's like a grown up version of it and it gets praised like across, you know what I mean? Like broadly, the thing gets praised. Which, it's it's really weird, you know? Just like a misogyny thing, I guess. I mean, I'm not the first person to point it out, but still. I know a lot of people hated the Turning Red movie for appealing to little girls. Yeah, there are, like, so many movies that are kind of, like, directed towards young guys, and nobody gives them any shit for that. They just point, it's like, oh, yeah, it's like a, like, a like yeah, awesome movie, because, you know, it'll be, like, action or whatever. But then it's like, oh, well, this, I don't know, this kind of appeals more to girls, and it's like, oh, cringe. It's so fucking weird. Yeah, Turning Red was pretty good, right? I saw Turning Red. I, th I thought it was, like, fine. It definitely wasn't um, stellar, but... I mean, for, first of all, they didn't even mention 9-11. 9-11 would have just happened, like, canonically in the universe. And they never addressed the trauma or any of the, like, social repercussions. So, I mean, leaving that aside, it's in Kandavash. 9-11 happened to everyone, okay? 9-11 happened to Iraq. Didn't... Di okay, pardon me if I'm remembering correctly. Didn't Iran officially offer its condolences to 9-11? Like, when 9-11 happened, didn't the nation of Iran, the Ayatollah, offer condolences? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I am remembering that correctly. To 9-11? Yeah, to 9-11. Like, to, uh, to say, like, I'm so sorry that happened, basically. Basically, yeah, basically everyone did. I think North Korea did, too. 9-11 just straight up shouldn't have happened. Really, OS, <laughs> really, OS Crane, is that true? Uh, you know, a, a peacemaker of our time, uh, your, your, your bold perspective... Hold on one second. Um, Iran condolences 9-11. In the aftermath of the attack, the Iranian public responded with sympathy and their government was something resembling prudence. Tehran was the scene of spontaneous candlelight vigils by ordinary Iranians 
and a temporary suspension of the weekly chants of death to America by its official clergy. Guys, they were so sympathetic after 9-11 happened that for a whole week, the Islamic clergy stopped preaching death to America. That's really nice of them. Iranian President uh, Mohammad Khatami discussed the military campaign, condemned September 11th attacks. Because they didn't call it 9-11 back when 9-11 happened. You know, nobody, people weren't pointing up uh, after the first tower got hit and were like, wait, if one more tower gets hit, this will be a 9-11. And then when, it, when the second one hit, they're like, fuck, 9-11, you know? It took a while. Um, yeah, they called it today, actually. Do you have any idea how much cultural power America has to have to label a terrorist attack by a date and for everyone in the world to know what it refers to? You know, like there's only one 9-11. It's not even 9-11-2001. Uh, like we didn't even name it by the year. We took an entire day out of the 365 days that there are. And that date is now globally recognized as uh, uh, a reference to the uh, terror attack. That is, uh, that is real uh, cultural hegemony right there, you know, real, real civilization cultural victory. I mean, the 4th of July is kind of like that. Yeah, true. To an extent, we also did it with the 4th of July, and people also do kind of, uh, yeah. Okay, so I need help understanding why Euros do this. Why is there a prime minister and a president in some of their backwards lands? Yeah, so a president is voted on directly. A prime minister is appointed by uh, through a parliamentary system. So in uh, usually the president is the head of state, and the prime minister is the head of government, meaning that the president is seen as the official representative of the nation's interests when dealing with like diplomacy or foreign matters. And when it comes to policy and the kind of stuff that would go through the legislature, the prime minister is the um, is the guy you'd go to. But that varies country to country. But a prime minister is is part of a parliamentary system. It's like the UK system, but replace the king with the president. Yeah, to an extent, kind of. Yeah, because the king, the king in the UK is like kind of the head of state, though obviously it's not like the the king is the official representative of the UK when when dealing with foreign countries or whatever. But you know, yeah, kind of. I think there are some advantages to a parliamentary system, but uh, I don't know. For the most part, I feel like presidents are cool. I still don't get how Israel has both. Well, you 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 vote in the president like directly, basically, or in America's case, the electoral college. And for the prime minister, you would have the the parliamentary system, you know, appoint them based on who's represented most prominently in the uh, in the system compared to a presidential system. So. so.